everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we're learning about the Black Storm Clownfish. These captive bred clowns are great for a beginner looking for an eye-catching fish to add to their tank, or an experienced reefer looking for something new. Aura has been an absolute beast at producing some wild variations of clownfish with new colors, and even long fin versions of them. If you're looking to get one of these designer clowns, make sure to look them up because they have a ton of really cool looking ones out there that'll have tons of pictures and names you can look up. For this video, it's gonna give you a good overview that can really be used for them all. So jumping right into it, prices for the Black Storm seem to have a variety when I was looking around online and around town. I saw some deals as low as $80, but other places were wanting $150 just for one. So definitely do your research, find the best price, and find the best variation that fits what you want. Because what's wild about these captive bred clownfish is none of them are going to look exactly the same. Even if it's the same breed, one of them might have a lot of white on the body, another one might have more black spots. So usually if you're looking online, most places will say this is the one you're getting. So make sure to look around and see which one you like the most. Tank size, I'd recommend at least a 20 gallon tank. Typically, you know, a sand bed, nice little rock structure that has some hiding places, give them some caves they can go behind and hide out, especially whenever first getting introduced into the tank. Clownfish are not huge swimmers, as you'd see something like a tang swimming up and down, left and right, all across the tank. They're going to end up finding spots around it and hang out there, almost guarding it. On the flip side, you could add a group of them to a really large reef, so you can really go either way. I've seen people adding half a dozen clowns to a 200-gallon reef, and it's really fun watching them guard their leather corals and anemones around the tank all swimming together. Care level is super easy, especially with being a captive bred fish. They're going to adapt easier in the tank setting and are usually much quicker to eat. Whether you're feeding flakes, pellets, whatever it might be, they're usually pretty good about eating it quick. Also with a captive bred fish, they're going to be much hardier. So a lot of times whenever you're a beginner just starting to learn things, you're going to make mistakes that happen. So it's good to have a hardy fish that can survive those spikes or whatever might happen. So captive bred fish are just known to be a lot hardier in the tank. Make sure to still do a good acclimation of the fish so that the levels even out before going into the new tank. A lot of times we do drip acclimation just because it's nice and slow for them. But just take your time with it and they'll do great in there. Temper of these clowns and really any clowns tends to be semi-aggressive. As a clownfish is in the tank for longer periods of time, they're going to begin claiming territory over rocks, over corals, and sometimes just an area of the tank. So once they claim this territory, they're going to be known to charge at fish or inverts that get near it. Now usually that's about as far as the aggression goes for the peculas and the oscillaris clowns. They aren't one to continually charge fish and bite them and so forth. It's not going to get that aggressive. But usually you can see them pecking at a fish's fin, and that's about all the damage you're going to see. Reef compatibility is most definitely a yes. Now with a captive bred clown, people will usually ask the question of, will these clowns host corals and host anemones? They definitely can still host them. However, with the captive bred clowns, that instinct sometimes isn't as strong. So I've seen plenty of times where a clown just won't host. They just never cared for it. So some of their favorites to try to get them to host is, of course, rose bulb anemones and green bulbs. Any of those bulb anemones are a good choice to go for. It's one of the best results I've seen over the years. It's what my maroon loves to get in. It's big red bulb anemones. Big leathers, too, like toadstools. I've even seen them get up in nep nephthia trees. So those are a really good choice. And you can even try LPS corals. I haven't seen this as often, but it is really cool. Whenever you see a clown hosting something like a brain, you'll typically see them catch a mouthful of food. They're going to be very aggressive when getting food, and they're going to be running straight to that coral. And you can see them almost trying to bury that food until it opens its mouth and takes it. So it's a really cool thing to see in the tank. There's going to be plenty of tools people use to encourage a clownfish to host. But for me, it usually just takes time. You know, you have that mirror trick or holding a picture in front of the tank with a clownfish on an anemone, a whole bunch of crazy things like that. But for me, it just takes time. So I've seen clowns host in the matter of 20 seconds of adding them into the tank and then other instances where it was months later and then they just decided to adopt that anemone and host it. So it can be kind of random. 
my overall opinion is just to be patient with them. They want to host it, they will. Temperature, you want to keep it at 72 to 78 degrees, DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.020 to 1.025. So you keep all that in check, they will do just fine. Like I said, they are a very hardy fish being captive bred, but still take care of your water changes, watch them levels, make sure you don't run into a spike. Max size these clowns can get is only about three inches, so they stay relatively small. The maroon clown that I have is now pushing like four to five inches. The dude's getting huge. So these are going to stay small for you. The diet of the clownfish is an omnivore. Now most of it's going to be meaty food. I'm telling you, clowns will eat just about anything once they're in the tank and seeing what else you're feeding. So I see them eating flakes, pellets, frozen cubes of mysis and brine shrimp. And my clown will even yank off some algae from the clip and try to feed it to the corals. So they'll pretty much go for anything. So give them a good variety and they'll love it. Origin, of course, captive bred. You're getting them from different places like Aura and some other companies have started captive breeding them and shipping them out to people. So check around online. There's a bunch of good resources out there. And for your compatibility, just ask. Usually it is best to do a pair of clowns together. That always helps them adjust quickly and keeps them out and about in the tank and not hiding behind their cave most of the time. I recommend sticking to two clowns of the same kind in a tank. Unless you just have a really large tank, then I could say you could start mixing variations together. The problem people run into is they are constantly attacking one another, nipping at the fins, locking their jaws together, because they end up taking over the same territory, and it's just a fight to the end. With other fish though, like tangs, angels, wrasse, gobies, all those peaceful two semi-aggressive reef fish, they will do just fine together. So if you're still trying to figure out if this clown is going to be good for your tank, just leave a comment below. What size is your tank? What do you have in there? And I'll be sure to help you out. And you know how we do it. We like to keep these things short, keep them simple. That way, whenever you're in the fish store, you can pull this video up and make sure it's going to be good in your tank. So that's going to do it for today's episode of All About. Thanks, for everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out all our other All About videos. See what you want to add to your tank next. If you have any recommendations for future videos or want to share your experience with these fish, don't forget to leave that comment down below. Or you can reach out to me on social media. Y'all have a great week. Stay safe, be kind, and I'll see y'all later.